Underlying the dynamic process of collision are geometric rules. Let's start simple and ask, what is the geometry of collision for two non-maneuvering bodies? Welcome to Section 1, Module 2. So what is a collision course? We have an intuition for it, we've seen it, and we've possibly experienced it. But geometrically, what is it? Well, we start with a target with constant velocity, meaning that its vector doesn't change in length or direction. And then we have a pursuer. The line between the pursuer and target, the range vector. From the range vector, we establish a target heading angle. And also along the range vector, we define the direction of the line of sight. Now the pursuer needs a velocity to collide with the target, but what magnitude and direction should that velocity vector be for collision? Well, we can think of many obvious circumstances where the pursuer velocity would not lead to a collision. But let's suppose that the pursuer velocity magnitude is defined and constant. Then, for the target velocity and heading angle, there is a lead angle relative to the line of sight direction that results in collision. To see this, let's set these bodies in motion. Let's initialize at time equals zero seconds. And then one second later, the pursuer and target have moved VP and VT meters respectively. And one second later, at three seconds even closer, until at three and some odd seconds a collision occurs. This is called a collision triangle or an engagement triangle. And because it's a triangle, collision is governed by geometry for these non-maneuvering bodies. In summary, this relies on constant target velocity, constant pursuer velocity, the lead angle, and a geometric relationship. At this point, differential equations are not needed to describe collision. Instead, we can use trigonometry. Because the velocities are constant, we can construct a similar collision triangle based off the velocity vectors, with a relative velocity vector between the pursuer and target. Now, you may have seen in the news that Falcons have been trained to intercept drones, so let's use them as our pursuer and target in this example, respectively. With this similar collision triangle, from the law of sines, we can relate the velocity magnitudes, target heading, and lead angle. Now solving for target heading, we get a function of the velocity ratio and lead angle. Also, if the pursuer body is aligned with its velocity vector as shown, then the lead angle also corresponds to the direction of the target in the pursuer's visual field. We'll call this angle the look angle, and note that it's referenced to the body axis. For continuous target tracking, the eye of the bird or the sensor of the pursuer must have the target within its achievable visual field or field of regard. These visual considerations are important to the achievable collision triangles of the pursuer. Now let's further explore the collision triangle through this formula. This is a contour plot of target heading angle as a function of velocity magnitude ratio and pursuer lead angle. Contour lines for target heading are shown from 10 to 80 degrees in 10 degree increments. Suppose pursuer lead angle is limited. Then for the pursuer to collide with faster targets or targets having greater heading angle, the pursuer must go faster. Let's consider that the pursuer and target velocities are first equal. For 10 degrees pursuer lead, the collision triangle exists for 10 degrees target heading. Less than 10 degrees target heading means less than 10 degrees pursuer lead is needed. But the opposite is also true. Greater target heading means equally greater lead. Now, if the pursuer has a 3 to 1 velocity advantage over the target, the pursuer can use 10 degrees or less of lead to collide with target headings of up to 30 degrees. For a 5 to 1 velocity advantage, the pursuer requires up to 10 degrees of lead to collide with targets having up to 60 degrees. Clearly, given a lead or look angle limit for the pursuer, the faster it can go relative to the target allows collision with targets having greater heading. What's the impact of greater pursuer lead on the collision triangle? Here's where we started in the last slide, 10 degrees lead. 10 degrees target heading with a velocity ratio of 1. Holding velocity ratio at 1 and increasing lead to 30 degrees allows collision with target up to 30 degrees heading. And 40 degrees lead, 
means collision with targets having 40 degrees heading. So clearly, greater pursuer lead means collision with greater target headings. Also, as the velocity ratio is increased, the same trend holds, but for any given target heading, less lead is required. Here are the principles to take away from this module. First, for non-maneuvering bodies, collision is described with geometry. We used trigonometry to explore the collision triangle. We found that to collide with targets having greater speed or greater heading, the pursuer had two options, increase its speed or increase its lead angle. The faster the pursuer relative to the target, the less lead needed to collide. The greater lead the target can implement, the greater set of target headings the pursuer could collide with. And this is increasingly so as the speed of the pursuer increases relative to the target. Before moving on to the next section, be sure to attempt this problem set. Giving some thought to these problems now will pay dividends later. The answers to these problems will be provided in Section 1, Module 3. In the first problem, a falcon and a pigeon are on a collision course. The geometry is provided. Assuming the falcon continuously maintains visual track on the pigeon, what at least is the falcon's look angle? In problem two, interpret the collision triangle in the limit of increasing pursuer velocity. And in three, the opposite. Interpret the collision triangle in the limit of increasing target velocity. In four, qualitatively and quantitatively describe the collision course in terms of the line of sight. Then, consider that a pursuer detects a target. How could the pursuer detect whether or not it's on a collision course? And what can it do to obtain one and maintain one? Five is basically a follow-on to question four.